Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++, lesson 3.0. Today we're going to learn about arrays. So, arrays are very, very, very useful and you will use them a lot. Even though they're, they're counterparts, vectors and everything, you'll use it all. It's, it's all the same, just one's better than the other. <laughs> anyway, arrays is just a way of storing multiple values underneath one name. So, normally we have an integer maybe called num for number and we store maybe a value of 0 or 3 underneath it. Well, an array, we are going to make an integer array called num array. And the way to make an array is after the name of the variable, you put an opening and closing set brackets and that makes it an array. Now, notice how we still have an array. If, uh, sorry, an, an error. If you if you look at it, it says incomplete type is not allowed. Well, technically this is an array, but the array needs a size. It needs a set definite size. So, um, just for, for all practice and purposes, let's say this array can hold 10 values. Well, wow, failed that. Num lock wasn't on. All right, it holds 10 values. Oh my gosh. There we go. So that means I can put as many values in here as long as it's not more than 10. So, let's go ahead and put a value in there. Let's say num array at position 0 is equal to 1. So, notice how I said the name of the array, and then I put an opening set bracket, and I put a number. Now this number is called your index, and what you're doing is you're indexing a value at that point. So, uh, let's see, think of an array as a string of boxes. Just like a line of boxes, box number one, box two, box three, box four, box five. And think of that there being ten boxes there. And each box is labeled with an index, zero through nine. Now, you may be thinking, why, why use zero through nine? Well, arrays start with zero, and they end with the length minus one. Because it, it only makes sense to start with zero, because it's the first number. But then, if you um, count on your fingers... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When you get to 9, you're holding up 10 fingers. So that is indeed 10 boxes to put 10 numbers into. You're just starting with 0 and you're ending with 9. So the first box is going to be filled with the value 1. So let's go ahead and fill the second box. It's under the index of 1. Num array at position 1 is equal to 2. Num num array at position two, which is the third box, is equal to three. Now let's switch it up a little bit. Num array at position five is equal to let's say it's equal to six. Just to stick with the trend. Num array at position ten is equal to let's say nine. No, let's say eleven. No. There is no position 10, I'm sorry. At position 9, we'll say it, it's that the number is 10. So now we have uh, five values inside the array. So we have the first box is filled with 1, the second box has 2, the third box has two has uh, the, the number 3, the sixth box has the number 6, and the tenth box has the number 10. And all the other ones are empty. The value inside is nothing. It's, it's not even 0. It's just no, nothing. It's void. So... Let's go ahead, let's say output position 1, and then we're going to put the value here next to it. Now, lazy programmer. Need one more. All right, so there's our ten outputs. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, there we go. So let's see what happens when we output all the values. Five of them have numbers corresponding to their position in the array, and then the other five have no value. So let's see what happens when we output. Oh. See? It says 
the variable num array is being used without being initialized. Now what that means if we look in our debugger here by the way this is the debugger that comes with uh, Microsoft Visual Studios uh, the program stopped right here when it got to position 4 num array 3 so let's go look at our values this is our, our, our uh, array num array and then these are all the positions inside of it position 0, 1, 2, 3 through 9 and you can see that from these five lines right here it got through that so we have position 1 is equal to 1 position 1 is equal to 2, position 2 is equal to 3, position 5 is equal to 6, position 9 is equal to 10. So, we can see that those all five got correctly, uh, got the correct value. But if you look at the others, you get negative 8, 5, 8, 9, 9, 3, 4, 6, 0 oh, in all of them. That just means that it is void, that the number has not been initialized there. It's nothing. So, what it's, what's happening is the program is trying to output absolutely nothing when it gets to this line, which is impossible. I mean, it, okay, that's that's not good to say because you know outputting nothing is possible, but it's trying to output, uh, let's see, an abyss <laughs> of number, I guess. I don't know. It's 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 trying to output uh, something that doesn't exist. There you go. It's trying to output something that doesn't exist because we haven't given it a value yet. But so you can't output something that doesn't exist. It's impossible. So what happens is it gives us an error and it says, no, you're not allowed to do this, so fix it. So what we got to do is we're going to move these values down. We're going to put this in position three. Oops. We're going to put this in position four. And then we're going to get a few more values in there. Okay, let's just go ahead and put random numbers in here. I'll put a zero in that one. And a negative 234. Okay, so now let's run it again. Whoops, oh, it's still debugging. Hang on, let me. Okay, well, let me hit the, deb the stop. Okay, it stopped by itself now. Okay, let's go. Run it. <laughs> Oh, this baby. <laughs> well, would you look at that? We forgot to put a value in four. Stupid me. Let's make this one negative three, two, nine, four. Go me. Stop debugging. Debug. Yes. Let's see what kind of values we get here. Position one is at, okay. Well, technically that's position zero, but the first box has one. Second box has two. Third box has three. Fourth box has six. Fifth box has negative three two nine four. Sixth box has ten. Seventh one fourteen. Eight. 1364, 9 has 0, and the, the tenth box has negative 234. Let's go through here and make sure these match up. The first box, 1, second box, 2, third box, 3, then 6, negative 3294, 10, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 0, and negative 234. So you can see that these positions are indeed outputting the correct thing. Now, what if we want to cycle through an array? Well, I made a program already pre made for us, so. I'm going to erase all this. Now I'm going to get out my nice address book program that I wrote for you guys. I wrote this specifically for you about 10 minutes ago. You guys are special. So, let's put this up in here. So, as you can see, we have a Boolean value. Now, I'm not sure if I've taught you Booleans, but Boolean value comes out to be true or false every time. So, we're going to create a variable called running. And of course, we want our program to start out running, so the running is going to be equal to true. Otherwise, it wouldn't run because we'd say false because it goes to this thing. Now, we make a character called choice and an integer called total contacts. 
Now that's just going to be the, the, the total number of contacts in our address book. Right now at the beginning, we haven't made an address book, so we have zero contacts. So that value, variable is going to be zero. Now we create a standard string array called contacts, and it holds 20 contacts. I could make it more, but just for the sake of learning, let's make it 20. In fact, let's make it 5. That way it won't take forever and a half. So, then it says, welcome to the temporary address book. And then we have a while loop. And this while loop has, encases all of this all the way down to this set bracket right here. So, while running equals true, we're going to keep running the program. This is our alternative to using a go to uh, statement. So, we're going to say, choose a selection. Well, there's three choices add a contact, view the contacts, or exit. And you can see we, we put the, the thing to type in in brackets, so they hit A, V, or E to choose their selection. And then it takes their input, and it clears the input buffer, so we can get line down here. And then we have an if-else structure. If, if they entered A, in capital or in lowercase, then we're going to enter the name of the contact with this. And look where it's going to save it. Contacts at position total contacts. So... Since total contacts is an integer, we can use that as our index. It's a changing index. It changes itself. So we're going to save our, our contact in the contacts array at this position, whatever that value is. So you can see that it starts out at 0. The first contact is going to be saved at position 0, which is the first one. And then after it's saved, total contacts plus plus. What this line does is it increments the... Uh, it increments the integer by one, so it's just going to go up one. And then the next contact that entered, it's going to be entered at position one. And then it's going to go up another one, enter at position two, going to go up another one, enter position three, and so on and so forth, until we get to five, which would then make us giving errors. <laughs> but if they entered V, then, w then we're going to... Well, actually, let me go ahead and show you the, the adding thing. Whew. <sighs> <laughs> I have Sweeney Todd songs stuck in my head. That's all right. It's a good movie. Good movie. Okay. Welcome to the temporary address. Book choose a selection. We were going to add a contact, so we're going to hit A. Please enter the name of the contact. Uh, let's say. John Smith. Choose a selection. So, as you can see, we entered the name of the contact, and that's all it had to do. So it skipped the else if, else if, and the else, and it went down to this bracket. And since running is still equal to true, it went back up to while and told us to choose a selection again. So, now we're going to choose another selection. We're going to say add, and let's say Johnny Bravo. Choose a selection, add contact, view contacts, or exit. So, well, let me go over the view, the view section, then I'll, I'll uh, show you how it works. So, you have, wh whenever we click view, it's going to tell us how many contacts we say. So, it's going to say you have, and then it's going to see out total contacts, just to tell us how many there are. And then we're going to add in the word contacts there with the S and the parentheses. So, <sighs> and then we have a for loop right here. Now, notice how there's no set brackets to, to uh, encase whatever it's doing. That's because what the for loop is executing is only one line. Remember how I told you for an if statement, if the if statement is only executing one line, then you only need that one line and you don't need the set brackets. Well, the same thing goes for for loops, while loops, all that stuff. You just can't do it for functions or classes and, and the big stuff. So... This for loop is going to create an integer called i, a temporary integer, set it equal to zero, and as long as i is less than the total number of contacts, we're going to increase i. So, see out i, period, and then contacts at position i, which means that we're going to uh, see out the variable value that is saved in the array at position whatever i is equal to. Just like we did to add a contact with total contacts, we're going to do the same thing with i, except we're going to display it instead of uh, writing to that spot. So let me go ahead and run this for us. 
choose a selection. Let's go ahead and add a value. Uh, Johnny Bravo. Let's add another contact. Um, I have no idea how to spell this. Ulysses S. Grant. I'm pretty sure I spelled Ulysses wrong. You have two contacts. So, let's go ahead and go over the first thing it said. It said you have two contacts. Total contacts, whenever we added a value, it started out as zero. And whenever we added a value, it upped it by one. And then it upped it by another one. So, it knows that we now have two va two contacts because every time we added one, it was keeping track of how many we had the whole time. Then, if we go down here to the for loop, it says int i, i is less than total number of contacts. So as long as i is less than two, then we're going to keep doing this because the total contacts was two. So we start out at zero, and it outputs the first value. Then we go to one. And now it puts the second value, and we go to 2, and 2 is no longer less than 2, it's equal to it. So we stop there, and we don't output another one. Excuse me. And as you can see, we output the zero contact is Johnny Bravo, the first contact is Ulysses S. Grant. Now, let me um, show you what happens when we say less than or equal to total contacts. I just changed that one thing int i, i is less than or equal to total context for the for loop. Add Johnny Bravo add Ulysses S. Grant. There we go, that looks correct. Now, view you you have two contacts zero Johnny Bravo one Ulysses S Grant two uh oh it didn't say anything that's because there's no value at position three so it didn't output anything that makes complete sense right good so let me go ahead and hit E whenever I hit E in the menu you can see else if choice is equal to E then we're gonna set running equal to false it's gonna finish out the while loop and check the 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 thingy at the top, the condition, and it's going to be no longer equal to true, so it's going to exit the program. There we go, it goes down to the cn.get, hit enter again, the program exits, just like it should. So, that is the basics of how arrays work. Um, just play around with them, you need to know these definitely. Uh, they're very important, so mess around with them, get the hang of them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Google is your best friend, it never will not be. So, use Google if you have any questions. If you can't find it on Google, ask me. Ask your friends. Ask people. Ask Beyond Strustrop for all I care. Just figure it out. <laughs> find some way to learn this. It's very important. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in Lesson 3.1.